everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today we're looking at Michelangelo's Pietà. The Pietà was made somewhere between 1498 and 1500, but the dates vary a bit on the internet, so I'm not 100% sure. It was made by Michelangelo and it was commissioned for the Cardinal Jean de Bahil, who was a French representative in Rome. He'd have been a bit like a diplomat. And it's said that the Pietà was the sculpture that made Michelangelo's name. He completed it before the David and before the Sistine Chapel. It's made out of Carrara marble and it was made as the Cardinal's funeral monument. The scene of the Pietà shows the Virgin Mary holding the dead body of Christ after his crucifixion, so he's dead, but before he was placed in the tomb. And it's one of the key events from the life of the Virgin, known as the Seven Sorrows of Mary, which were the subject of Catholic devotional prayers. And it was a theme that would have been pretty well known, but it was only really shown in art in the Northern Renaissance tradition, and it was pretty unprecedented in Italian sculpture. Michelangelo's interpretation of the Pietà was really different from those made before him by earlier artists. Because he sculpted Mary as a young, beautiful woman rather than how she was traditionally shown as a woman of around 50 years old. Christ himself was meant to be 33 when he died, so there are various explanations about why the Virgin looks the same age or possibly even younger than her son. One reason is that her youthfulness symbolises her purity. Michelangelo himself actually said to his biographer and fellow sculptor Ascanzo Condivi, do you not know that chaste women stay fresh much more than those who are not chaste? How much more in the case of the Virgin, who had never experienced the least lascivious desire that might change her body? So pretty sexist, but that's what they thought. Another explanation is that Michelangelo's young Madonna was influenced by his love for Dante's Divine Comedy. He knew the work so well that when he went to Bologna, he actually paid for his accommodation by reciting verses from it. In one part of the poem, St Bernard, in a prayer for the Virgin Mary, says, Virgin Mother, daughter of your son. And this is said because in the Christian doctrine, Christ the Son, God the Father and the Holy Spirit are all considered part of the same Trinity. They're all part of God and since he's the Heavenly Father, by that logic, Mary is both Christ's mother and also his daughter. By making them both look the same age, it's probably meant to enforce the theory that they're both each other's child and parent. As for Christ, he's been left pretty free from the marks of the crucifixion. They're limited to very small nail marks and a slight wound in his side. According to the New Testament, his body was pierced by the lance of Longinus, one of the men involved in his crucifixion, to make sure that he was dead. And in the Gospel of John, it says that water and blood poured out of his wound and often his disciple Thomas is shown sticking his fingers into the wound when Christ is resurrected because he wanted to double check that the man he saw die is the same man he sees before him alive. So he's usually called the Doubting Thomas, but it seems pretty fair enough that you'd want to check that your friend was actually alive when you'd seen them die. Christ's face also doesn't show any signs of the passion, and it's thought that Michelangelo didn't want to show his interpretation of the Pietà to represent death, but instead he wanted to show um, an idealised and sacred version of Christ to make him look like the perfect martyr. And Christ's perfectness reflects the High Renaissance belief in Neoplatonic ideals, that beauty on earth reflected God's beauty, so these beautiful figures were echoing the beauty of the divine. But the structure could also be read as a pyramid shape, with the top of Mary's head as the top of the pyramid. And then it gets wider over her drapery towards the Rock of Golgotha. Now, the Rock of Golgotha was the place Christ had been crucified, just outside the Jerusalem city walls. And the triangular shape might also reference the Holy Trinity again, most triangular formations do in religious art. The Madonna and Christ are actually quite out of proportion, as Christ seems much smaller than he should be. But that's because he's a fully grown man and it's almost impossible to be cradled on a woman's lap like that. Most of Mary's body is concealed by her drapery though, which makes the relationship between the figures seem quite natural and their differences in size is not too noticeable. Although the drapery does serve its practical purpose of making the Madonna look smaller and Christ a bit bigger, 
It also allowed Michelangelo to show off his incredible sculptural skills. His ability to carve deeply into the marble and make the stone look extremely realistic. It looks less like marble and more like actual cloth because he's created natural looking folds and deep recesses. According to Giorgio Vasari, shortly after his Pietà was installed, Michelangelo overheard someone say that it was a work of another sculptor, Cristofano Soleri. And after hearing that, Michelangelo signed the sculpture, writing, Michelangelo Bonarotti Florentine was making this, on the sash running across Mary's chest. And the signature echoes how the ancient Greek sculptors signed their work, and it was the only work he ever signed. Vasari also writes that Michelangelo later regretted this outburst of pride and swore that he'd never signed another of his works. When it was completed, the Pietà was put in the chapel of St Peter's, where the Cardinal had chosen as his funerary chapel. It got moved probably sometime in the following century, when the Basilica was being rebuilt in Bramante's design. Since it was created, the Pietà has seen quite a lot of damage. Four fingers on Mary's left hand were broken during a move, and they were restored in 1736. But scholars are divided about whether the restorer maybe took liberties to make her gestures more expressive than they had been originally. And the most substantial damage happened in the 70s. On the 21st of May in 1972, a mentally disturbed Hungarian-born Australian called Laszlo Toth walked into the chapel and attacked the sculpture with a geologist's hammer. He was also a geologist. He shouted, I am Jesus Christ, I have risen from the dead. And with 15 blows, he broke Mary's arm at the elbow and knocked off a chunk of her nose. And he also chipped one of her eyelids. Bob Cassily, an American sculptor and artist who was one of the first people to remove Toth from the Pieta, he wrote, I leapt up and grabbed the guy by the beard. We both fell into a crowd of screaming Italians. It was something of a scene. People who were watching took pieces of marble that flew off as souvenirs, and later some pieces were returned, but many weren't, and Mary's nose was lost. And this meant that it was reconstructed from a block cut out of her back. After the attack, the work was restored and returned to its place in St Peter's, and it's now protected by a bulletproof acrylic glass panel. This next bit is quite exciting. A few years ago, a small terracotta figure was identified as the model Michelangelo used for his Pietà. The terracotta sculpture first became known about 20 years ago, when it was acquired by an antiques collector in northern Italy. And he thought it was worthless, he thought it was probably from the 19th century, and he kept it in a mouldy box. So he sold it to a collector for basically nothing, just absolute peanuts. But luckily the collector thought it might be made by Michelangelo and he contacted an American art historian called Roy Dolinia, who specialises in the Italian Renaissance. And a team of researchers was set up and they came across multiple references in documents from the time talking about the existence of a terracotta figure. So there were about four different references to it. One was from Rome in 1591, one was from Bologna in 1600, one from 1610 and one was from 1585. The statue was originally covered in layers of bright paint, but after storing it for about three years, the paint was stripped off and underneath it showed plain terracotta. Scientific analysis shows the work was produced between 1473 and 1496, so that corresponds perfectly to the part of Michelangelo's early life when he would have made the model. And it's made of a mix of clay and a mineral called dolomite, which was usually found in the Alps in Tuscany. And Michelangelo would have known the area well because he went there to source the marble he used for his statues. So it's thought the miniature sculpture would have been made as a kind of sales pitch to the cardinal as a way of showing him what his tomb would, tomb would look like if he commissioned Michelangelo. And remember at this time Michelangelo was completely unknown in Rome. It was the beginning of his career and he'd have needed to show his patrons what he was capable of. There are several reasons why the researchers have decided this is the model for the Pietà, because at first glance they do look quite different. So to begin with, Michelangelo often made terracotta models before he made the real thing in marble, and they were usually the same size as this one. It also matched an old Florentine measure, 
and that was called a brachio florentino, which is a Florentine arm, and that measured 58 inches. So that's commonly what was used during the time. And this terracotta model of the Pietà is 58.3 centimetres long, so it's highly likely it was made in Florence. There are other clues, for example, Christ has a forked beard and distinctive arm and eyes. And these are features which you can also see on Michelangelo's marble statues of Jesus. And the researchers have also decided that this male physique in this model matches Michelangelo's sketches, which they found in the Louvre. And the way Mary's clothes tumble to the ground in heavy folds is typically Michelangelo-esque. So the researchers said they had their doubts to begin with because people were always claiming they had found a Michelangelo sculpture, but they're fairly certain that this figurine is by Michelangelo. So that's my video on Michelangelo's Pietà. I really hope you enjoyed it. Um, I thought the figurine part was really interesting because I'd never heard of that before, before I started researching for this video. And yeah, please tell me what you thought about it. Please remember to like and comment below if you haven't already. And thank you so much for all your support. And thank you once again for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.